One afternoon, as Edward popped past the vicarage orchard, he was surprised to see how busy it was. There were people up on ladders, carrying crates, and gathering apples into bags, all helping Trevor and the vicar prepare for Southery Market. Poor Trevor will be run off his wheels with so many deliveries, thought Edward. I wish I could help. You've got enough work to be getting on with, the driver told him. The vicar has already hired an attractor to help Trevor deliver the apples to market. He'll manage just fine. A few days later, the vicar began shifting the apples from the orchard. The market was taking place near to the station, and the tractor had been parked up in the station car park whilst the crates of apples were being unloaded. Beep, beep! Good morning! Edward called cheerfully. The tractor gave him a dirty look. What's good about it? I have to get up early and make repeated trips, and I'm surrounded by the old-fashioned. Edward was offended by this. I may be old-fashioned, but I am useful. The tractor just scoffed and laughed at him. You're a smoky old kettle. You belong in a museum, not working on a railway. Edward was hurt, but before he could say anything else, it was time to go again. He puffed out of the station and headed for the junction, where James was waiting. But before Edward could even begin to complain about the tractor rude behaviour, James interjected. How's Shane settling in then? Is that what he's called? Edward scowled. He's about the rudest tractor I've ever had the displeasure of meeting. I know. I brought him here from the harbour on my last goods train. He moaned continually about us being out of date. Soon shut him off after a few hard bumps though. It's a shame we won't be able to do that now, James. We'll just have to put up with him. As Shane was making his way back to the market again with another load, he saw Boko rolling towards him with a train of empty china clay trucks. Shane laughed loudly at him as he approached. Ho 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 ho! Look! It's a great big green box on wheels! Boko took no notice and just rolled on past with no regard. Shane thought it a great joke. Smoky old kettles and giant green boxes. What a queer place. Later that day, while he was making his way back to the orchard again, Shane's engine stalled whilst going over the level crossing. His driver tried turning the key to start his engine again, but it was no use. All it did was splutter and chug, and Shane wouldn't move. I knew this would happen one day with your wretched old engine, the driver grumbled. Why did it have to be now? Don't blame me, he snapped. If you were maintaining me better, we wouldn't be in this mess. But it'd have been better off using Trevor. At least he's reliable. In the distance, they could hear the sound of a train approaching. Boko blasted his horn to warn traffic at the crossing to stop and let him pass. But he had no idea that Shane was stuck on the crossing. The driver waved furiously at Boko's cab to warn them. But it was no good. Boko's driver slammed on the brakes, and the weight of the trucks propelled him forward regardless. Shane's driver ran for cover, leaving Shane shouting in terror. Boko finally stopped the train, and his crew jumped down to see what had happened. 
Shane lay in the bushes, looking hauled to pieces and groaning miserably in pain. Is everything all right? Boko called back. I only wish it were, replied the driver. We've given that tractor a good hard bump. Boko and his train were taken onto the station by Donald. And Shane was lifted from the bushes by a crane and taken away for a full inspection. When he reached the junction, the fat controller spoke to Boko. The accident wasn't your fault, Boko. There was nothing you could have done to prevent it, so don't feel too bad. Here's hoping you've knocked some sense into that horrid tractor at long last, chuckled Edward. You must go to the works and have your front end mended at once, the fat controller continued. That tractor has caused no end of trouble throughout his stay here. But sir, Boko begged, who'll help out here? The fat controller smiled. There's one engine I think will be suitable, and he thinks he's deserving of a branch line of his own. I may as well let James see what branch line running entails. And besides, I wager the other mainline engines can manage without him. Trevor finished the last of the runs to the market on his own, and chuffed home feeling very pleased with himself. On his way, he stopped to see Boko. Shane was certainly quieter when they got him back to the vicarage. Boko still felt rather guilty. Is he repairable? Oh yes, a few months and he'll be right as rain again. But I wager he'll be a different tractor altogether now that you've knocked some sense into him. So I did good after all then, laughed Boko. Trevor chuckled. You certainly did, but by accident, you might say.